TCR Europe and the Kumo TCR World Tour welcome you to Portugal for the second round of the TCR Europe Championship in 2023. The sun continues to shine in the Algarve as we prepare for 12 exciting laps of tin top racing action. Yesterday was a cracking event with a 1-2 for the BRC Hyundai team. Can they repeat that with a reverse top 10? It will be a difficult task. There will be stories of redemption. There will be stories of drama. We will find out in a few moments' time as we go down to the grid with Francisco Mello. Welcome along to the starting grid of race two of TCR Europe, a 22 car starting grid. And we are here with uh, Paul Sitter Santiago Orrutia from Uruguay. He had uh, not very good grace yesterday, but today, new day, clean day, starting from Pro, will try to overcome the bad luck of yesterday. Is this is the newest car, the Leak and Co car, uh, cracking livery, and we're here with a pole sitter. Santiago, quick words, not a very good today, but today new day, starting from pole. Go for the win. Yeah, we struggled a little bit yesterday on qualifying and of course wasn't a good race, but uh, it's racing, you know it can happen now we start from pole. Uh, of course, we struggle a little bit. It's a new car, so we kind of like in the development of the car with new tires and everything. But now we're starting pole, so let's see what we can do and see if we can keep the position till the end. Thank you. Good luck. And now let's talk to the sensation of the weekend. The teenager, the rookie Kobe Powers from Belgium. He was... Uh, P2 in TCR Europe today and starting P2 from today. Kobe, you have been the sensation of the weekend. P2 in TCR Europe, best rookie, and now starting from P2. Go one better to today? Uh, I will try. It will for sure not be easy with so many fast cars around me, but uh, I will try to get a good start and make, hard, make their life as hard as possible. Thank you, Kobe. Good luck. And last but not least, let's talk to Mr. Touring Car himself, Tom Coronel, the legendary Tom Coronel. Let's see if we can talk with Tom. Excuse me, Tom. Of we, we are here with Tom Coronel. Tom, starting P4. Uh, tell us about the plan for today with your young and very fast teammate. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, uh, we're here, of course, to score points for the European Championship. I think this is the most important thing. Um, but uh, still, you know, uh, I'm also here to fight for the races. Uh, we don't give presents, but uh, everything looks good. Uh, I feel strong. So let's see what uh, the race can bring us. But uh, we were fast yesterday, but I was a little bit stuck. So I did some good overtakings big fight in the beginning, but uh, everything feels well uh, to attack race two. Thank you, Tom. Good luck. I don't need luck, huh? uh, Of course, you don't need the luck. You do the luck. <laughs> you don't need luck, my friend. You need sex and money. It's all you need in life. <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> Uh, that's it for the grid right now. Now let's get ready for race two of TCR Europe. Fantastic, thank you very much, Francisco, for the grid walk down there. Plenty of drivers are very excited, just like we are up here, for what is about to come our way. This is TCR Europe. This is our opening weekend of the season, the second and final race that we'll be holding today at the Algarve Circuit in Portugal. Portimao, a wonderful venue in which to go racing and without the pressure of knowing you have another race to follow. 
I very much expect the elbows to be out in force today. A lot of the drivers felt a little bit reluctant, I think Sorry. it's fair to say, tentative to make sure they didn't get into trouble. But now it is all about the here and now. It is all about the next 12 laps. It is all about scoring the most points they possibly can for themselves, their teams, and the manufacturers as well. And of course, we've got a race within a race. We've got the TCR Europe Championship that hosts the Kumo TCR World Tour. The TCR World Tour drivers are represented with a three-digit number. They are invisible in the points for TCR Europe. The TCR Europe drivers have a two-digit number and they score points for themselves in TCR Europe, but also in the Kumo TCR World Tour results too. So there's something to fight for for everybody. And that is going to lead, I am categorically certain, to some incredible racing. As we saw down on the grid, there are a few drivers, this man included, Ted Bjork, who were looking for some redemption today. Bjork had a very difficult qualifying on Saturday morning, then recovered in the race, but was not as high up as he would have expected. Eighth position was his result, starting from the front of the second row of the grid. He'll be hoping to convert that into, at the very least, a podium and potentially even a race victory. Ted Bjork, massively experienced, incredibly rapid driver with titles at the very highest level of touring car racing. So we expect him to move forward. And another driver that we're looking at now, Martin Qua, incredibly popular with the fans. There are a vast number of fans in the Lincoln Co. Hospitality unit that have been tracking his every move. So Martin Qua will be looking for another strong result and to move forward as the race progresses. We've had an event already. We've had, in fact, to be frank, two test sessions of one hour apiece, two free practice, qualification, and the race. So these drivers now are starting to get a better understanding of what they have underneath them, how the tyres work with the cars and the circuit. We've got new driver combinations. We've got brand new drivers. We have new cars on the grid as well. So a lot of those unknowns there's, there's been a tick marked against them now. There's a little bit more knowledge across the field of how to go about and successfully race on this track in this championship. And if there's one thing in motor racing that we strive to achieve is removing the unknowns. So I'm expecting today, in the next few minutes, to be a much more combative, shall we say, experience than we saw last time out. The fans are already lying in the grandstands, ready to see, there we go, Santiago Arutier fans there waving the flag for their driver and starting from pole position, following a disappointing early retirement last time out, Arutier will be hoping for a big day in the office. Mikel Athkena that we're looking at now, a double TCI Europe champion, finished second yesterday, shadowing teammate Norby Michelitz. So expect Alcanar to be another driver that is keen to make a move through the running order as early as possible. But, like we see many times in racing, and in touring cars in particular, when you're in the middle of the pack is where the drama tends to be. So first corner, first few corners, and first lap will be critical for a lot of these drivers to make inroads to the cars ahead, but also stay firmly out of trouble. Jan Elishé is another driver that had a disappointing time of it. Last time out, started 11th on the grid. He will be incredibly hungry to work his way up through the field. Will Elishé, uh, again, another incredibly quick driver, finished seventh last time out from a starting grid position of uh, P11. So opportunities to continue to push forward with that race experience that I spoke about earlier on, with one in the books, for knowing how this championship works, how the drivers behave amongst each other as well, which is incredibly important because a lot of these drivers are in the field for the very first time. They're not used to the personalities and the names. We've got a number of rookies on the grid. In fact, we've got four rookies led by the sensation that is Kobe Powell's. So let's take a look at our starting grid. Santiago Arusha is our man on pole position from Kobe Powell's and Audi. In third position, Ted Bjork. For Lincoln Co., his teammate just ahead of him, lines up in third. Fourth is Tom Coronel from Marching Qua. Nesta Girolami, the sole Honda on the grid, is sixth from Frederick Verviche and Rob Huff. 
great race from Huff last time out, starting eighth, work to do ahead of him. Mikhail Afkanar is ninth position just ahead of Nobi Michalic. Jan Elisher, who we saw earlier, keen to progress from 11th, 12th, John Philippi just ahead of Victor Davidovsky, the diamond chaser, Dusan Vorkovic starts at 14. And Victor Anderson, 15th position, and Felipe Fernandez is 16th on the grid. Then we have Lewis Brown for Volcano ahead of teammate Isaac Smith. Ben Barguana is 19th on the grid and Ruben Fernandez is 20th. And the last row of the grid is Nico Baldan and Carlson for an aggressive team. Italia, both of those drivers, Mikel Carlson and Nico, uh, Nico Baldan, will be looking to make inroads. We know the Hyundai Elantra NTCR is a fast car around this circuit. We saw that yesterday with the BRC drivers. So Balban and Carlson will be keen to step forward and see if they can improve their lot over the course of the next 12 laps. Now, the Portimao circuit opened in 2008 as a very new venue, but unlike the majority of new venues, features an incredible amount of undulation. It is very much a driver circuit, 4.653 kilometers, just 15 corners, but those corners, each and every one of them, are critical to the performance of the car and the driver. And if you check out the TCR TV YouTube channel, you'll see an onboard lap that we did earlier with Rob Huff, where he explains just what it takes to get a TCR touring car quickly around this Portuguese venue. And you can see from that on board just how many corners you have to be fully committed to make sure you get the ideal line to run through the turn into the next part of the circuit. And it really favours drivers who are confident and comfortable in their car, have a setup in a window in which they need it to be, and that gives advantage to drivers that carry a little bit more experience of these conditions into this race. So we expect everyone to have lifted their game somewhat since yesterday, and some nervous faces down there at Lincoln Co. waiting for their drivers, their four drivers, to line up on the grid. Nesta Girolami looking at on board. Girolami, worth noting, in the Honda, the only Honda on the grid is Nesta Girolami, and it's the Civic Type R FL5 TCR. So the brand new Honda Civic, still very much a case of learning about the car in TCR Europe. So again, a solid result last time around for uh, Girolami, finished in fifth position. Expect him to be a contender as the race progresses and Santiago Arutia that we're looking at now leads the cars into the grid spots they will stop at their markers when every car is on the grid and in position we will receive the green flags the lights will begin at the front of the field and then we will be dropping the green flag for a fantastic I am absolutely sure motor race that is about to unfold in front of us. Kobe Powell's the left-hand side of your screen for Conti Racing that you see there in the Audi, making his debut weekend in touring cars, was outstanding last time out, finished second in the TCI Europe classification, 10th overall, ahead of none other than touring car legend Tom Coronel, so we know he can absorb the pressure, we know Kobe Powell's has the pace, but does he have the experience to convert that front row start into something tangible at the end of the race. We'll find out in a few moments. Looking through my uh, window here, I can see Carlson lining up into the last place on the grid. So we'll very shortly be going racing. Do not go anywhere, everybody at home. Touring car racing is about to get excited as we are ready to go. The green flag at the back of the field is being waved. Look at the lights at the top of your screen. They will come on one by one. When they extinguish, we will be going racing. Three lights, four, five lights, and we are go for TCI Europe 2023, round two, here at Portimao, Arutia, straight to the inside to defend the line from a hungry Kobe Powell's. Powell's not getting the optimum start, losing out to the second of the Lincoln Coast. That is Ted Bjork and Tom Coronel around the outside. Coronel with a lightning start around the 
outside. Can he convert it into second position? Bjork holds the inside line. Not enough room for the Audi driver. Everybody through the first few corners safely, which we love to see. And there is Powell's now getting in contact with Nestor Girolami. Powell's to the outside in contact. Kobe Powell's back on the racetrack. Hard contact with one of the Elantra cars. That is a massive hit there. And Kobe Powell's will have damage. Well, look who it is that he struck in a few moments' time. I think that may have been Dusan Borkovic. We'll find out in a second. Let's have a look. Yes, there it is. Dusan's car is ruined at the front, and that was a massive, massive impact with Kobe Powell's. Hopefully, everybody can get back round to pit lane and we can stay in green flag racing conditions. But that is the experience he was talking about. That is the drama that we expected on the opening lap. And meanwhile, Santiago Arutia is still our race leader from Ted Bjork. Coronel is holding on in third position. Frederick Verbeesh has moved up to fourth. And Mikel Afkenar, great start from the Spaniard into fifth place as we're not even through the opening lap of the second race of the TCI Europe 2023 season. And there is Powell's absolutely distraught. The car stranded at the side of the road. And inevitably, we have our very first safety car of the year for the Kobe Bowles and Dusan Borkovic contact in the early stages of the opening lap. Hopefully, we get to see a replay of that incident in a few moments' time, but that is such a shame for a driver that has been absolutely sensational this year. And despite the end result, still good experience to bank into the armory, so to speak, of a driver skill set and use in future endeavours. We learn more when we're knocked down than when we're successful, and this will be a big learning experience for that young Belgian man, Kobe Powell, as he trudges disconstantly back behind the barriers to a position of safety and the long walk home to pit lane. So, safety car, this gives us an opportunity to increase the race distance by a maximum of two laps as Dusan Borkovic still gamely echoes as Gilles Villeneuve there running the car on three wheels as he's trying desperately to get back to pit lane to see if his team, the aggressive team Italia squad, can do anything about the damage and get the car back out again before we go back under green flag. And that is also Nesta Girolami. So Girolami in a little bit of strife in the Honda as well, the ALM car having to come down pit lane and have a little bit of work done, so I'm not sure exactly what happened to Nesta Girolami, but that is disaster for the Argentine driver. Kov started high up the grid in fifth position, was looking to consolidate his good result from yesterday as well, so Girolami damage to the side of the car, new tyres on, but this may be a bridge too far for the ALM squad to get that car up and running again in a um, semi-competitive proposition, so real shame for Nesta Girolami. As I was saying earlier, with a safety car, within the regulations, we have, we have it within our gift to increase the race distance by a maximum of two laps to cover the amount of time that we're slowly running under the safety car conditions. You'll see at the top of your screen where the number of laps are displayed, if that changes, will indicate our new race distance. And we also saw the universal sign for, sorry, son, it's over. So Borkovic and the target competition car, day is done as Girolame returns to the racetrack, makes sure everything is pointed in the right direction for Nesta Girolame, make sure the car is still behaving as he expects it to be. If the answer to that one is yes, then hopefully he can, circum he can navigate himself back round to the back of the pack and continue having a race. But uh, sad end of the day for Dusan Borkovic, been a difficult return to uh, TCI Europe for Borkovic, unfortunately, uh, Last time out, 12th position, started 14th on the grid, and it's an early bath for Borkovic. Yeah. So you can see at the top of your screen, laps are still ticking by as the cars are going under safety car conditions, but we have increased our race distance to a total of 14 laps. We've added two laps to the predicted 12 to give us more green flag running while the marshals in a fit con 
tradition to go racing. And I'm hearing him here. Let's have another look at that race start and try and unpick some of the stories and dramas. Valdo at the back of the field has a really slow launch, and uh, Carlson, his teammate, manages to get the advantage on the run down to the line. But let's focus our attention at the front of the field and Tom Coronel, who got a lightning getaway from fourth on the grid, was running side by side. In fact, had a nose ahead of Ted Bjork for the five for second position. But on the outside line, it's always going to be a diminishing return, and Bjork takes that position back away again. Coronel slips in to third place. And let's see Kobe Powell's a little bit further down. There we go. That's the contact with Girolame. And then returning to the racetrack, unsighted. Sapolkovich. Heavy contact between the two of them. So unfortunate for Powell's there, just not aware. Another car is on the racetrack at that particular moment in time. Another onboard replay. Now it's great to have, by the way, onboard cameras here in TCI Europe as we're riding on board. This is Girolami's car. So we see the Marder. Oh, Lincoln goes ahead trying to find a little bit of real estate. So of the Portimao circuit on board with Jan uh, Elishai in the Link and Co. 11th on the grid, Ashkenar just ahead, Rob Huff as well, two drivers that were both very much in the thick of the battle at the front of the field. Outside line, risky position to be for Elishai, but gets away with pretty much everything there, and that is Nesta Girolami and Powell's. There we go, Girolami catches the curve, actually, and runs into Powell's. That's what pushed the young Belgian wide, and then the return to the racetrack is what did for the day. So those sausage curves on the inside of the corner, incredibly difficult, three into two, does not go. Kobe Powell's is the man that misses out, and then returning, Dusan Borkovic up on two wheels. That was a massive hit. And hopefully Dusan and Kobe are both absolutely fine after that contact, but a real sizable hit. Dusan Borkovic, if you didn't know he'd return to touring car racing, he does now. So, safety car still continuing to circulate, keeping the cars at the regulatory speed. A bit of weaving behind the car as well, just to make sure there's enough heat in the tyres that when we do go racing again, everything's in prime condition. And let's take this opportunity to have a look at where our running order is as Powell's car is getting lifted onto the back of the snatch vehicle, but moved away shortly, so we will be racing again. But let's take a quick look at our running order. It is Santiago Arutia that is our race leader from teammate Ted Bjork in second. Frederick Verviche, good work off the start line to hold third position just ahead of Tom Coronel in fourth. Mikel Adkenar, one of our big movers at the start of the race, is now in fifth position just ahead of Marching Bar, holding on to that sixth place from Rob Huff and Jan Elishe from 11th to 8th at the start, having a good opening lap to this event. Novi Michelic holds ninth position, our race one winner yesterday, Currently in ninth place ahead of Felipe Fernandez. That one went under the radar. Felipe Fernandez started, let me have a look down my sheet, in 15th place and is now up into the top 10, just ahead of John Philippe, who took the uh, maximum points haul for TCI Europe yesterday. Victor Davidovsky is in 12th, Ruben Fernandez in 13th. Ben Barguana stayed out of trouble in the Peugeot, is holding on to 14th position from Victor Anderson in P15, Isaac Smith and Lewis Brown are 16th and 17th, Nico Baldan for Aggressive Team Italia is in 18th place, Mikel Carlson is 19th, Nesta Girolam is still circulated in 20th, Dusan Borkovic and Kobe Pauls both out of the race. Safety car should be in this lap as the snatch vehicles and the course cars and everything are just getting themselves off of the racetrack, taking that very sad looking for itself. Uh, Audi RS3 TCR from Contiu Racing behind the barriers. Unfortunate for Kobe Powell's, but we're about to go racing once again. And I do distinctly recall at the top of the show suggesting that just maybe race two might be a bit more elbows out. Well, yeah. Elbows out, it has been, indeed. So there is a very disappointed looking Dusan Borkovic, unhappy with the end result, as can be expected. No one likes to see that kind of retirement, but we are going back to the racetrack in a few moments' time. In fact, the safety car remains. So I'm seeing on my screen that the safety car was going to be in this lap, but in fact, we are doing at least another tour of the circuit, which is a real shame. We hope to get going green flag racing again. But let's put it this way. 
a reduced length of time under green flag and a lot of hungry drivers who ho get ready buckle your seat belts folks at home because this is going to be an intense few laps to the checkered flag as we look to finish off the opening weekend of the tci europe 2023 season and the new Kumo TCR World Tour. And in fact, while we have this pause, let's talk about the Kumo TCR World Tour. In case you're unfamiliar with what this entails, it's joining TCR Europe for this weekend. And all cup drivers that compete in the TCR World Tour events are eligible to score points for the Kumo TCR World Tour and TCR World Ranking. TCR World Tour's full season entries, however, are not eligible to score points for the local TCR series that hosts the event. So they are invisible to our TCR Europe point standings, but our TCR Europe drivers score points for the TCR Kumo World Tour. And alongside that, we have the TCR World Ranking. Innovative, brand new in motorsport. Points are awarded to drivers globally in all competitions for a ranking system to see where you rank. The top 45 of those plus the top 15 of the TCR World Tour will then go to a grand final one-off event at the beginning of 2023. Massively excited. It is a new era of TCR touring car racing. And to be sharing that with you this weekend, the TCR Europe joined by the TCR Kumo World Tour is an incredible experience, a privilege and an honour, and hopefully for the next few laps, we're going to put a cherry on the top of the cake and have ourselves an absolutely cracking race. So the safety car is in this lap. Get ready to go racing again. There we go, the safety car pulls off to the side. Santiago Arutia becomes our de facto pace car. And now our race leader, the drivers are back up to racing speed in single file formation as we filter down into the first turn. Got to be careful with the car. It's not going to be as warm as it would have been in ideal racing conditions, but everybody judges this one to perfection. There is Victor Anderson and Nesta Girolam is bad day gets worse, facing the wrong way, stationary on the racetrack. Girolami looks like he is done for the day. We'll find out what happened there, but Nesta Girolami for ALM in the new Honda is having a much worse day today than we saw last time around. Real shame for Girolami there. Hopefully he gets that car fired back up and into the race and doesn't disturb this one as there we see that is Smith trying to look down the inside of Victor Anderson. Girolam is out of the car and running across the racetrack to a position of safety. This is going to be at best yellow flags, at worst another safety car. So if you're going to make a move, chaps on circuit, now is the time to do it as Marcinqua is looking to the rear of Mikel Ascona ahead. Not quite enough room for Marcinqua at this moment in time. And turn 13 safety car, sorry, yellow flags are still very much waving. Turn 15, my apologies, are still very much waiting, waving for that stranded Honda. Hopefully he is off the racing surface as we see a little fight further down. Now the running order, it's great to see so many brands, so many beautiful cars at the Marching Marching Bar. Lincoln Co. Cyan Racing Machine is yeah. very much Maya. a welcome addition to the field. And here we go, unfortunately, back under safety car conditions once again. Everybody will slow down, of course. There will be absolutely no overtaking. And it's a little bit of time for all our drivers just to bring the blood pressure down a little bit as they go past the stranded Civic of Bebo Girolami. End of day, been a lot of work for very little reward, but Girolami will take heart from a strong fifth position yesterday and a good debut in TCI Europe for the new FL5 Civic. Lots of lessons to be learned. The car still very early in development and we will see them again and I am sure we will see them much stronger next time. That Civic joins our field as we go for the next round. And this is what's happened. So, smoke from the front of the car, a wheel facing very firmly in the wrong direction. So something there has broken at the front of the car. And Girolame, nothing he can do about that one. Courtesy, no doubt, of the contact that we saw earlier in the race. That is a sad way for any driver to end their racing weekend. And a sour note in which to take home with you as he jumps on the plane probably this evening and heads back home for Nesta Girolami.
while we are waiting for the safety car to go around, a quick word to anybody who's watching this broadcast at home. We have the new TCR TV app. If you're watching on the TCR TV app, congratulations to you. Great stuff for getting that one installed, downloaded, and registered for. If you're not, I do implore you to head over to your app provider of choice, download the TCR TV app, get yourself registered and signed up, and then you can access all the live coverage of TCR Europe, all the live coverage of the Kumo TCR World Tour, and many, many TCR championships throughout the globe. It's a one-stop shop for fans of live TCR racing, so it's a great initiative. It's outstanding to have a singular place to go to be able to access the so many great championships, TCR Italy, Denmark, South America, many different series are all present there and you can very quickly and very easily navigate yourself through to a race of choice, notified on when events are going live. Please do check out the TCR TV app and of course we're also still on the TCR TV YouTube channel so everybody watching from home, hello to you, thank you for joining us and we hope we'll be going green flag racing very soon indeed and hopefully stay in that way for the duration of this race. Girolame, once again, he's gone back and forward over that circuit one or two times, hasn't he? Just trying to uh, get everything, help the marshals to extract that car as quickly as possible, get it into a position of safety so we can go racing again here at the uh, Portimao circuit in Portugal. And let's have a look, let's have a quick moment, actually. While we've got a few quiet moments, we're looking at the Cyan Racing Team, deep in concentration, let's check out our running order, very similar to what it was before the second of the two uh, safety car interventions, but Santiago Arutia is currently leading, ahead of teammate Ted Bjork, so it's a Lincoln Co. Cyan Racing 1-2. Tom Coronel in the hour day for Come To You Racing, alongside teammate Frederick Verviche, a third and fourth. Yesterday's second position man, Mikel Adkanar, his fifth position, a good start for Adkanar, excellent starting fights, and that's really paying dividends now as we're locked into positions under safety car conditions. So he's fifth, just ahead of Martin Hoare. Martin Hoare's had a solid weekend, if not quite as spectacular as we expected, but if he can stay in and around the sixth position to complement the sixth that he got from race one, that would be a very nice day's work indeed. Just behind him is Rob Huff, our podium finisher last time out. Again, another hour day for Continue Racing. Huff, great to see him in TCR Europe this weekend. And he's ahead of Jan Elache in the 168 the Cyan Lincoln Co car. Started 11th position, early jump up to 8th place, but he's been limited in his opportunities to progress further, courtesy of these imposed safety car periods, for instance, in the race. Nobi Michelis, the man who won the race last time out, holds on to 9th, and Felipe Fernandez is in 10th position overall, the second of the Diamond Trophy drivers as well as Tom Coronel for this season is classified as a Diamond Trophy driver, which is a separate commercial championship within the TCI Europe, where trophy are awarded to drivers over 35 years of age. In the rookie standings, we have got one, two, three rookies for the race, and they're in 14, 15, and 16th position. So ben Barguana is the man leading that charge at the moment in P14, the number 71 car, the Australian driver. Ben Barguana here, over from TC Australia for this podium our event, and for Spark Frankish as well. It's great to see Ben Barguana here as we take in another look at a frantic start to this race. And Arutia immediately on the defensive. Ted Bjork, Harfer, and I, and his teammate, Harfer and I, are trying to keep the other Wiley, Tom Coronel, at bay behind as well. And that was a successful defence from Ted Bjork. Coronel could not quite find a way around the outside. Riding on board now, that is now sadly Nestor Girolami's car that we see ahead. A watch, too much curve, trying to go three wide, catches the inside, that fires the car hard in to the side of Kobe Powell's. Powell's not quite raised anything damage there. Let's have a look from the off board camera. Way off the racetrack, tries desperately to get back on, but Dusan Borkovic is also having a little moment of his own as well, running wide. And the contact was significant between those two cars. And I'm hopeful that both drivers are absolutely fine after that one, if not. 
a little bit shaken up. So uh, back to your live pictures. Safety car will be in this lap. Fingers crossed, everybody at home, that we can go racing to the chequered flag now as Santiago Arrutia pedal to the metal through the final corner, tries to eke out an advantage very nicely indeed. Well done, thank you very much, from teammate Ted Bjork behind. And we are back racing again here in Portimao for the final five-lap sprint to the chequered flag. Bit further down, the running order, Felipe Fernandez and Victor Davidovsky. Two Audis side by side, Fernandez to the outside. Davidovsky covers the inside line. That's the optimal position for Davidovsky to be to cover in to the slowest part of the racetrack, the first year hairpin that we're just going through there. And I think he's held on to that position quite nicely indeed. Coronel holding on to third position in the race nicely indeed as well. And the uh, forerunner, the front runner of the TCI Europe field as well for good measure. Good drive there from Coronel Othkinar on the defensive, further down the running order, Isaac Smith wasting no time on Victor Anderson to the inside, nice and neat overtaking manoeuvre there, Lewis Brown, his teammate, just behind, watching and hoping to engage in some of that one, Anderson having a much uh, calmer race this time around than we saw in race one, so that's good to see Victor Anderson prioritising track time and experience over being too aggressive at this stage in his very, very young career in touring car racing. Rob Huff, a man that's been around a little bit longer, is snapping at the heels of Mark Twin Ha, who Twin Ha is snapping at the heels of the Elantra ahead of him as well. So Mikel Adkana has not one, but two cars interested in saying hello to the rear of that Elantra and finding a way past them. At this moment in time, Rob Huff seems like the man who's got his cars on the tippy toes the most and is the most likely to try to affect an overtake as marching Guar now running through the penultimate corner. This is a near flat-out run to complete the lap and to start lap 10. Slipstream will be your friend, but you need good straight-line speed in order to pull yourself up to the rear of the car ahead and affect an overtake into T1. I don't think Huff quite has the legs at this moment in time. Further down, Fernandez holding his own in 10th position so far, Felipe Fernandez. Great to see him back in TCI Europe and having himself a very nice race indeed at this early stage. And slightly further down the field is that. Uh, let's have a quick look. That is uh, one of the volcano cars dropping a couple of positions as well. Three retirements from this race so far. Nesta Girolame, Dusan Borkovic and Kobe Powell's all out of contention as we see uh, Martin Guar again under pressure from Huff, just filling the mirrors of the car ahead. Make your rival think more about you behind than the track in front. Push him in to a mistake and Huff now holding his nose to the outside line but not quite enough room. I don't think, oh yes he is. Rob Huff gets the deal done, so Martin Guar lose the position but immediately on the attack again, showing his nose to the inside. It's a drag race now to the next corner. Rob Huff on the inside. Martin on the outside, Dan Alishay trying to buy into this one as well. At the rear of these three cars, two Lincoln Coes, one Audi, all fighting for the same piece of time. Michael Rob Huff is the man that holds the advantage at this moment in time. Alishay to the inside, has he got it done? Yes, he has. Marching hard gives him racing space, and Jan Alishay moves up one. Marching well, moves down two, and that is a change of position in sixth place. Rob Huff is the leader of that particular battle. Here we can see that fight, the sixth position riding on board with Jan Alashay as he's trying to do something about the rear of the Cogs to you out here. Had great piece of racing from those three drivers. Novi Michelis in ninth position just behind in the BRC Hyundai as well. Trying to buy into this one too, keeping a watching brief, waiting for an opportunity, using all the racing nows that he has as Tom Coronel coming under pressure at the front of the field from Frederick Verviche. Coronel holds on for now. The Third position retains his at this moment in time, and John Philippi looking to find a way past Fernandez holds the inside of T1, T2, and down into the breaking zone of the hairpin at turn three. Job done for John Philippi. So the dream flag racing may have been short to the wheel of lights, but it's certainly, certainly been intense, and we've got battles all the way through the field, apart from Santiago Arrutia at the front, who is checking out now from Ted Bjork, just over 
one second between the teammates at Lincoln Co. 1-2 at the front of the field. Tom Coronel holding on to third position in the Hour Day 4. Come to you racing the leader of the the, the highest scorer of the TCI Euro drivers in third position. So here, if he holds on to that, he will take a maximum score from this race, which will help his European Championship. No end in this first weekend of racing again. Riding back on board with Mikel Astana at this moment in time. He'll be satisfied with fifth, but be even more satisfied with something further up the field. Frederick Verfish gets the deal done, so Coronel drops off on the podium. Frederick Verfish takes that third position. Askana now trying to buy into it as well. Coronel's vulnerable into the right hand of the open. Inside door line has been left, and Mikel Askana decides, thank you, I will take that inside line, and Coronel will not be happy about that one following the Hyundai in his wheel tracks, a little bit sideways, a lot bit sideways through the turn, final corner, and Tom Coronelli gathers the car together, but that will have alerted his attention very firmly indeed to what may befall Leon Wehre here at Portimao, and that is a couple of tenths lost for Coronel and blunting the challenge somewhat as Fernandez now hard to the pit wall on the inside line, Fernandez chased uh, defended from Victor Davidovsky, Davidovsky looks one way, would it look the other way as well, tries to get the inside through turn two into the first gear hairpin of turn three, and yes, he does. Victor Davidovsky, a little bit of a kiss, a little bit of a hip and shoulder with Fernandez. Naughty there from Felipe Fernandez, but Victor Davidovsky's been there, seen that, done it, got the T-shirt, and takes the position for good measure. Davidovsky up to uh, 12th, Fernandez, uh, sorry, 11th, Fernandez back down to 10th, and now he has his brother for company as well. Oh, and Fernandez, mistake there into the back of Davidovsky. Davidovsky and Victor Davidovsky stranded on the outside of the racetrack. That was poor from Felipe Fernandez straight into the rear of the sister Audi car. Fernandez in the RC2 racing team, of course. Davidovsky, they come to you. And here we go. Misses his braking zone by a country mile. One bam. Sorry, man. Victor Davidovsky to the outside of the racetrack. And all that hard work, all that great driving undone in an instant as Fernandez contacts with the rear of the Macedonian driver and Davidovsky. I think he'll get the car started easy enough and return into the race, but that's still heartbreaking for the come to you driver of number, car number 11. And Davidovsky, remember, a winner in TCI Europe last season at Paul Ricard will not be happy at all as the BRC Hyundai team that we see there, led by touring car legend, man of touring car racing, Gabriele Tarquini, running things there at BRC. We've had a good weekend up to now, and with Mikel Adkinar in fourth position, added to his second place on yesterday, that will be a good day's work indeed, but Adkinar, I'm sure, is not quite settled for fourth and fancies the bottom step of the podium just in front of him. Frederick Verfish is the man that holds that position. Santiago, Santiago Arutia now. The gap at the front of the field down to seven tenths of a second, so there's a, maybe a fire there. Let's have a look. This is the Davidovsky move. Shows his nose to the inside. A little kiss, a little bit of a hip and shoulder as Fernandez tries to close the door. Davidovsky gets the deal done. And then we see the other Fernandez, his brother uh, Fernandez, in the second of the RC2 juniors also sniffing around for a little opportunity but Ruben still holding position there as we see Coronel now dropped down into position five has Tom Coronel Rob Huff the company Jan Alishé in seventh place also interested in getting involved and marching Hua in eighth position very very interested in both keeping the cars behind him very firmly behind him, but also trying to find a way to move up the running order as well as Jan Elishé. We see the front extreme marching well under pressure from Norby Michelitz, who won the race last time out, and Michelitz looking to score as big as possible to give himself the strongest points haul he possibly can from this world first weekend. TCI Europe and Kumo TCI World Tour. Mitchell is to the inside, a little bit late there, not quite alongside, but using the front of the car just to let Ma Twing Ha Ching Ma Twing Ha know there's a car ahead behind him, but nobody mentioned it, can't quite do the deal there, but can he do it here? Yes, he can, with a little bit of grass for company as well. Nobody mentioned it, to the inside, gets it done to the final corner. That's how you overtake here at Portimao. 
great move from Novi Michalic in the BRC Hyundai. Now he's got to carry that momentum all the way down the start finish straight. Marching Hua will fancy his chances into T1 as we approach. We roll in to the final lap of the race. Can that move get made? We'll find out in a few moments. Santiago Arusia currently holding on to a race lead from a hungry lucky Ted Bjork. Now just four tenths of a second separate those two with Frederick Verfish holding on to the bottom step of the podium as well. Coronel doing good work at this moment in time. Fifth position in the come to you. Aude are the leader of the uh, regular season TCI Europe driver, so a good day's work again from Tom Coronel. And a bit further down the field, that was optimistic looking, but hopefully everything cleared up through the hairpin as we ride on board with Rob Huff, just looking to the rear of Coronel, but no opportunities at this moment in time. So here we go then now, the final sector of the lap here at Portimao for the opening weekend in TCI Europe 2023 racing season. Santiago Arrutia firmly putting the dramas and disappointments of yesterday in the rearview mirror, converting pole position to an early race lead and possibly even the race victory through the final few corners. Mikel Avkanar charging in fourth place. Car 19 has a 10-second penalty. That is Felipe Fernandez for the shenanigans that occurred down at the hairpin with Victor Davidaske. So Fernandez has been uh, the verb the proverbial slap on the wrist by the stewards, and rightly so as well, for a clumsy manoeuvre. But looking to the front of the field, Santiago Arrutia through the final corner, hard on the gas, takes the checker flag and takes victory in round two of TCI Europe. At TCI World Tour, Santiago Arrutia from teammate Ted Bjork makes it a Cyan Lincoln Co. 1 2 in Portimao. Frederick Verwisch crosses the line, the bottom step of the podium in third place, just ahead of Mikel Ashkenar that gets the deal done at the flag in fourth place ahead of Tom Coronel, Rob Huff, Jan Alishay repeat seventh from yesterday, seventh today, John Philippi in ninth, just behind Nubi Michelitz and Ma Jinghua. Round out our top ten runners in what has been a barnstorming race. And there you can see the intervals at the line, the final provisional running order. Three Lincoln Coves for the cameras, for the drone that we've got here today, running side by side to celebrate what has been a very strong result, a much needed strong result after the dramas of yesterday and a great win for Santiago Arrutia at the front of the field. Victor Davidovsky did indeed remain, keep running after that contact as well. He crosses the line, sadly, last of the classified finishers in 19th position after what had been a strong and very entertaining race. Ted Bjork spoke to him before the broadcast went on air. He was hoping for a strong result. He was first priority is a result for the team, second priority a result for himself. And that's exactly what he's got, a strong second position of a 1-2 for Lincoln Co. Cyan Racing. So good result there for uh, Ted Bjork and for teammate Santiago Arrutier. Frederick Verviche does a good job as well in third position, rounding out the podium places. So another strong result for Verviche there and the team. He finished in fourth position yesterday. Goes one better to taste the champagne on the podium in position three today. And Again, everybody at home, I said it was going to be a great race, and a great race it was. Hope you've enjoyed this one, and make sure you tune in to all the races on the TCR TV app. Download it, register, it's free, and all of the races are broadcast on there. So this is your results for round two. Santiago Arrutia for the Lincoln Co. Cyan Racing Team in first place ahead of Ted Bjork and Frederick Verviche rounding out the podium. Mikel Adkanar in fourth position from Tom Coronel. Rob Huff in sixth. Jan Elishay is seventh. Nobi Michelitz follows up from his win of yesterday to cross the line in eighth ahead of John Philippi and Ma Chinghua rounding out the top ten. Ruben Fernandez has 11th. Felipe Fernandez takes 12th of the flag but will have a time penalty for his altercations. And he's ahead of the ever improving Ben Baguana in 13th position. Isaac Smith is 14th from Victor Anderson. Nico Baldan 16th. Lewis Brown 17th. 
Carlson and Davidovsky. Round out the finishing drivers with Nesta Girolami, Dusan Borkovic and Kobe Powell's, the three retirees from what has been a drama-filled and a safety car-filled second race at TCI Europe. Santiago Arrutia there on the roof of the car, taking the applause from the team, from everybody down in the paddock for a commanding race victory. He wanted to convert and convert. He did his qualifying result into a fantastic finish and a huge point haul for his Kumo TCR World Tour standings campaign. Backed up by teammate Ted Bjork in position two. It is a 1-2 for the Lincoln Co. 03 FL TCR, which, remember, is a brand new TCR car. It's an update from the original and also incredibly competitive Lincoln Co. And that car is showing immediate form. Coronel, ever the sportsman there, over to celebrate and congratulate his rivals on their great result in this second race of this weekend, the final race of the weekend, before we uh, pack our bags and in TCI Europe, do it all again at Poe in a couple of weeks' time. So while the drivers are all there getting prepared for the podium interviews and celebration, just to remind you that we are at Poe next time out, the 12th to 14th of April in TCI Europe, and the uh, TCI Europe and Kumo TCI World Tour resumes on the weekend of the 26th to the 28th of May at the legendary Spa Francorchon circuit. So. Poe, a new track for TCI Europe, a street circuit will be an exciting experience, I am sure, for our drivers and Spa, very much a known quantity in the world of motor racing, one of the finest tracks in European motorsport, always guaranteed to throw a little bit of drama into the air, which we just love here in Touring Car Racing. So, in a few moments, we're going to go down with Francisco Mello to interview our race winner. Santiago Rutia, that was a light to flag win, a great start, a great restart out of the safety cars. Tell us about your amazing race. Yeah, it was a good race, you know, it's always uh, good to win. So, um, first of all, I want to thank uh, Cyan and Lincoln Co. It's the first one too for the team in the new model, so thank you to the team. They have been working so hard. Um, you know, it's not easy series with a new new model. You need to work a lot. The preseason has been tough and uh, yeah. Now we can celebrate the one too, but yeah, about the race, uh, it was a difficult race to be honest because uh, the Audis were, were coming uh, really quick from behind. I had Ted uh, behind me that he was pushing as well and I think he was maintaining a little bit the pace from the other ones. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, we need we have a lot of work to do at the moment. We are, we're not having the pace that Audi and Hyundai is having, so we struggle a lot this weekend. Even if today we got a win, it's the reverse grid. We struggle in qualifying, we struggle in the race. So we need to work as a team. It's just the first race. So we look forward. Again, congrats to Cyan for the 1-2. And it's the first win for the model as well. So who, everyone who is involved in the team, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Santiago. Great to hear from our race winner there. And as he rightly says, the first victory for the new model for Lincoln Co. So a very successful international debut here at TCR Europe and the Kumo TCR World Tour. Great first weekend for them. And let's take a look at the driver's points of the World Tour. Nobi Michelitz is still our points leader from two points ahead of Mikhail Adkinar. Frederick Verwies doing his campaign a world of good. Third in the standings, nine in arrears. From Rob Huff, Ted Bjork, Santiago Arutia, courtesy of the victory today. Jan Elishe, Marching Hua, Tom Coronel, and Bebo Girolame are the top 10 drivers in the Kumo TCR World Tour point standings. Great scenes, by the way, from the drone here at Portimao. And in the TCR Europe Championship, Tom Coronel and teammate John Philippi are a dead heat at the front of the field. From Felipe Fernandez, Isaac Smith is fourth in the standings, Kobe Powell's in fifth, and Ruben Fernandez is sixth in the TCI Europe Championship standings with Ben Barguana and Victor Davidovsky, Nico Baldan and Dusan Borkovic.
race two has been an action-packed affair, it has to be said. We started the day anticipating a great race and a great race we did have. Many drivers looking to make up for a disappointing qualifying off the start, led the drama down into T1 through the first few corners, but then it would be contact. Here, Nestor Giralame catches the curb, hits Kobe Powell's, that brings the car back onto the racetrack and makes contact with the side of Dusan Borkovic, both cars exiting the race and into retirement, but thankfully no drivers have been injured. Rob Huff had another good race, solid performance, never quite managing to make the overtake, but was always in contention for that fight for position. Felipe Fernandez got himself a little bit of drama as well and a penalty for good measure. Fantastic scenes. And, and now our drivers are here to secure their trophies and the photographs to celebrate their race results and their top three finishing positions. There we go. That is Frederick Verviche, second step of the podium. Ted Bjork, happy, delighted it has to be said for second place on the podium. And there's your race winner, Santiago Arutier. Fantastic performance at the front of the field. Great stuff, our drivers taking a well-earned break for the national anthems. Santiago Arrutia taking the national anthem for his race victory for Uruguay, taking the first win for Lincoln Co. in TCR Europe and the Kumi TCR World Tour as well. Not only a race victory, but also a one-two for team. There is the trophy awarded from Frederick Verviche. Third position takes the Kumo TCR World Tour trophy for his podium position. Ted Bjork cheers from the crowd as well. Ted Bjork, a great race, very, very confident performance. And second place is his reward. And then, ladies and gents, boys and girls at home, our race winner, Santiago Arutier, arms aloft, trophy in the air. The race victory is his, and a fantastic performance indeed for Arutier and then Lincoln Co. Cyan Racing taking the Victor's Trophy for the team's championship as well. Everybody will form together at the top of the podium to receive their photographs, to have the photographs taken to celebrate and mark the occasion. That's a nice teddy bear with Lincoln Co. at the top of it. Not seen that one this weekend, very nice. And now time for the champagne and the celebrations. And there we go, everybody, very excited. The cameraman gets a face full of champagne as well. And that is great scenes on the podium, great sportsmanship from these three drivers drivers as well as they celebrate their victory in time-honoured fashion in the world of motor racing. Wonderful scenes, wonderful result for the three of them. Get the photographs for the Lincoln Co as well, celebrate their 1-2 in TCI Europe, first 1-2 for the uh, brand new Lincoln Co and TFL TCR for good measure as well. A good day's work and a great start to the racing season. Come to you celebrating their driver, Frederick Verviche, in third position as well. And there we go, there are the cars crossing the line, separated by next to nothing, our top four drivers, just as we come to expect in TCR touring car racing. And there we go, one, two, three, and four separated by next to nothing in a few moments we'll do the tcr europe podium as well as we celebrate the hosting championship round tcr europe of course their opening round of the campaign here today in portimao and that produced another very interesting result 
for our drivers. So that's going to be a championship. We've got a POW next time out for a very fast, very difficult and very challenging street circuit. So hopefully everybody gets through that one without too much drama and we uh, see touring cars racing on the streets of POW once again, which is very exciting. And I'm looking forward to that one POW to remind you all comes up very soon indeed as there is Tom Cavanell, ever the showman, goes to shake some hands, get himself on the top step of the podium as well. And it's good to see Fernandez on the podium too. First time we've seen him in National Anthems. Tom Coronel there taking the national anthem. And here we have Paolo Ferreria, the promoter of TCI Europe, handing out the trophies to our drivers, the TCI Europe trophies. You wouldn't want to uh, drop that one on your foot. That would certainly be a little bit keen, but it's great to see all our drivers taking their just rewards for a very strong race and performance. Indeed, round of applause from the paddock at the bottom of the podium, celebrating the moment with the drivers and John Philippi takes his as well and there is Tommy Coronel. Will he do the Coronel leap? He throws the arm into the air to celebrate the rounds of applause. No Coronel leap on this occasion but we will get the champagne. Oh there we go. Good man Tom has to do that one. It must get harder and harder every year to do that <laughs> leap off the top of the podium but it's very much a tradition with Tom Coronel and very much a tradition will be to spray the champagne after the photo. John Philippi's not waiting for anyone, he's getting in there straight away. Great stuff, great scenes and a great start to the TCI Europe Championship one that I'm very much looking forward to seeing how that unfolds in the weeks and months ahead and as I say don't forget we're going to be at POW next time out, Po, sorry, at next time out on the 12th to the 14th of April. So do make sure you join us for that one. It will be another cracking race. And as always, we do this for everybody at home and everybody at home. Thank you so much for tuning in. Coronel there celebrating. My name's been Paul Jeffrey. This has been TCI Europe 2023 opening round. Thank you for joining in. Until next time, take care and bye bye.